so special. So today, and actually every Sunday, or should be every day, it's all about him. It's all about Jesus. Um, because it, when, and more and more you learn about Jesus, more and more you, you start to see how amazing and special is the person of the Son. And of course, with the Spirit and with the Father and uh, our God. And uh, today, I'd like to. Oh, it's, it's not going there. Why is not going? Let's see if I need to press here. It's on and on. Okay. There we go. And um, so, I don't know if that's Greek for you. But actually, it's Greek, okay? And uh, so we see Jesus there, or actually a person who tried to be Jesus there and uh, among the, the multitude of people. And uh, we are going to see um, a very special and touching aspect of, the, of Jesus today. And... Actually, that's the word in Greek. Uh, and maybe you wonder what aspect of Jesus we are going to see today is so special. And, uh, well, the next slide we'll review. Uh, is, uh, let's see here. Uh, da -da -da -da. Okay. Maybe, Greg, you need to help me here. Okay. With, uh, yeah, no problem. I, we can adapt. Thank you, Greg. Take care of that. And uh, we are going to actually talk about uh, a compassion. Uh, Jesus, he had compassion. He could um, relate, have a sympathy with uh, what we are going through. And, um, and I would like to meditate a little bit about Jesus compassion and what that means for me today and what is why is this is important to talking about and the results of that should have in our lives and um, we need to go to let's see if uh, oh let's let's go oh you you <laughs> he changed it okay thank you so when I do this and you, we have a, a coordination here, okay? Great. Um, I'm going to read this text here. Matthew chapter 9, verse 36. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion. On them because they were confused and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. I'm going to read again. When he saw the crowns, when he saw you, when he saw me, he had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless. It's, this is the, I found an amazing quality because this is something in the heart. Jesus was, had, he had compassion. He saw the hearts of that crowd was confused and helpless. People was living their lives Without perhaps excitement, purpose, uh, we don't know exactly, but Jesus is just pointing something. They were like sheep without shepherd. Like they were living their lives without that something, that hope for the future, for living their lives without fear about death or difficulties. 
they have somebody beside him. And that crowd was living like a sheep without a shepherd. Like a leader. Like an example. Like God in their lives. And uh, when, when we see... Um, the, to go to the dictionary is sometimes helpful to go to the dictionary and see the, how the dictionary talking about compassion and said the meaning of compassion is sympathetic consciousness of others, distress, together with a desire to alleviate it. So compassion had that that ability when somebody shares something to you and some way you, you have that, there are some people really gifted. Uh, I, I, I will say Tanya is one of them. And sometimes I, I can see how uh, the impact of sometimes um, in, in her receiving that kind of, uh, uh, um, I don't know exactly the word, but she can feel your pain. She can in some way feel the load as well. And sometimes I, I, I can see and, and I need to encourage Tanya, easy Tanya, easy. Uh, yeah, easy, take it easy. And uh, because she can relate. And this is a, a, her quality, maybe it's your quality, and I, I'm sorry I didn't know if you have this. But there are some people very, uh, they can relate. They can have, uh, they have the ability to be in your shoes and feel what you feel. And when we look at, Jesus had that ability. And this is special because uh, he knows our fears. He knows our anxiety. He knows our situation back home or back at the school or, or um, at work. He knows. He, he has that ability to be in our shoes a hundred percent, and he can relate what we're going through. Oh, so Jesus has the capacity to feel what you feel. Sometimes, and it happened with me, even sometimes us have a hard time to use the words of the stress or difficult things going in our lives. And sometimes we do not have a words for that. We just have that feeling, that pain. And the special thing about Jesus, compassion, is you do not need to use words. He knows your heart. And you just invite Jesus, you can see my heart, how heavy this has been, how difficult this has been, or how stressful this can, can, it has been. Jesus can feel what you feel. And it's beyond, I like this second part here, it's beyond heartbreak. Jesus can See and feel the sadness and suffering you're going through. It's not just thing from outside. Oh, your life and my heart is break for what is you going on in your life. This is in some way, in a human perspective, that's what I have. Sometimes we have a, our heart is break for what some people go on. But Jesus is beyond that. He can feel what you feel. If you feel lonely, if you are sad or happy or praising God, he has compassion, that sympathy. But he can feel what you feel. 
It's so intense and close. And uh, another text, because we can see Jesus' compassion in several passages. Um, I'm going to read another text. So John was beheaded in the prison. This is the John the Baptist, the prophet. And yeah, if you know the story, that's the when Jesus received that, uh, that news. So John was beheaded in the prison, and his head was brought on the tray and given to the girl. And of course, we have other texts giving all the information. Who took it to her mother. Later, John's disciples came to his body and buried it. Then they went and told Jesus, what had happened. This is the, the background of what we are going to read now. As soon as Jesus heard the news, remember, John was cousins. Jesus and John was cousins. Perhaps play together, grow together, uh, eat together. They know each other well. As soon as Jesus heard the news, he left in, the, he left in a, a boat to a remote area to be alone. Perhaps mourning for what happened with John. He would like to be alone. But the crowds heard where he was heading and followed on foot for from many towns, Jesus saw the huge crowd and he stepped from the boat and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. Um, what comes to me when I read this is he was mourning for the loss of his Dear cousin, serving the Lord, kill in a situation very unfair. But all his emotions or his time, he set aside because he saw the crowd and he stepped from the boat, and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. Jesus' compassion is serious because he saw perhaps people on that crowd suffering for many years, perhaps, for different kinds of diseases, and for some reason, his heart was able to see. And he said, you know what? My problem is nothing in comparison of these people going through. And Jesus had compassion. And he had compassion. We, we have been praying here for people, for many people actually, in a health situation. For Glenn, I'm glad to see Edgar here. Gloria was in the hospital. She is here. Uh, Rosemary had her health issues too. And other people, perhaps, with other kind of situations. And the special thing about this text is, is <clears throat> Jesus, he had, he has compassion. Right now with you. And he is delivering. He is perhaps healing. Uh, to helping us. We are not alone. We have a compassionate God. Who knows us very close. And so this is. A, a message of, uh, uh, of a hope 
and, and celebration because we adore a God who really knows us intimately. Uh, compassion is showing love and kindness towards others during challenging times, giving them a piece of your heart and asking for nothing back in return. That's true compassion. It's you helping somebody. Extend your hand. Uh, not expecting anything uh, back. Let, let's read another text. Let's the, learn from the word about our Lord Jesus. That in Luke 7 says, Soon afterward, Jesus went with his disciples to a village of Naim. How, how will you pronounce that? Naim? Okay. It's a village. He went to this village. Okay? I'm glad you, you can... You are okay. You do not need to know the name of the village. It's the village. Jesus' disciples came to a village. And a large crowd, again, crowd, look again, a lot of people there follow him. A funeral procession was coming out as he approached the village gate. The young man who had died was a widow's only son. A, a large crowd from the village was with her. I believe everybody was kind of uh, feeling the, the pain of that widow. Remember, widow on that, that time of was, well, does not have a husband. She is a very difficult situation financially, socially, and now she is losing her son, the one who could give support for her mother. When the Lord saw her, his heart overflowed with compassion. Don't cry, he said. Then he walked over to the coffin and touched it. And he and the barriers stopped. Young man, he said, I tell you, get up. Then he and I'm sorry, then the dead boy sat up. And began to talk. And Jesus gave him back to his mother. And everything starts to change with that. When the Lord saw her, he could see her pain. He could he see her maybe coming to her mind. Oh my goodness, what going to be about my life? I lost my husband, now my son. And his heart overflowed with compassion. Jesus' compassion. Once more, Jesus can see our heart and who we are through and through. And he healed the, the, that we don't know how old it was. But he healed that boy and gave back to the mother. I just can't imagine the smile of that mother and what Jesus did. And actually, nobody asked Jesus' intervention that moment. He just did it. 
because he can and because he, he wants to bless that poor mother. Oh, wow. Well, what an intervention. Go ahead. This is a big deal to act with compassion for Jesus. Compassion is a quality we learn from the Lord, but we, in some way, as followers of Jesus, that, that, that should be our mark or our, one of our qualities, to have a compassion about people. And, and this text is so special because, again, I would like to stress about the, the compassion of Jesus about us. doesn't matter who you are or what you do. Look at this text. We have a great high priest, a leader who has gone to live with God in heaven. He is Jesus, the Son of God. So let us continue to express our faith in him. Jesus, our high priest, is able to understand our weaknesses. When Jesus lived on earth, he was tempted in every way. He was tempted in the same ways we are. Tempted, but he never sinned. With Jesus, our, as our high priest, we can feel free to come before God's throne where there is grace. There we, there we receive mercy and kindness to help us when we need. So even though Jesus is not here, black, um, Flesh and bone and flesh, that's correct. Oh, man. Flesh and bone. Okay, thank you. It's, it's, a, it's a, a group sermon here, a participation. Oh, man. But Jesus is, is not here uh, bone and flesh, flesh and bone. He is not here. Sorry again. But he is not here, but he is on the throne of grace. And we have the, the freedom to, during our time in difficulties, we can go before the throne of grace and receive grace and mercy from him because he, is, he has compassion. Uh, but this is not a free pass to sin. Oh, he knows my weaknesses. This is not a free press, a uh, free pass just because he is compassion. We are not talking about this. We are, what are we talking about? He has compassion. He knows our weaknesses in, in, during difficult times in, in like a uh, feel alone or anxiety or, or fear or, or you, know, you know what you, we are talking about here. He knows us and he can strengthen us during our time of difficult. So we have an amazing Lord who show his compassion, die on the cross, rose again from the dead. He is sitting on the throne and he is this always present, a compassion God. What amazing. We start there and we still have this availability today. This is a big thing for God show his compassion. And I'd like to read a text, actually, 
talk about the future and uh, when Jesus comes because he is coming. And I hope you have this expectation. I, 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 I mentioned several times to tell you, I hope this week Jesus return. Really. Because before the Lord, in the presence of the Lord, we are not going to feel all the messiness and the darkness and the difficulties we have in this life. It's so special to have this hope. We'll be in with Jesus someday. And, she, and he will be back soon. And the text uh, I'd like to read is Matthew 25. It's not an easy text, but I'd like to read this for you. When the Son of Man, and talk about Jesus, comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, the sheep ones, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your in inheritance. The kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did you see you seek or in the prison and go to visit you? The king will reply and look at that. Truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the, the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Um, this is a, a, a very strong text. And um, it appears to me as a people of God, or we call people of God, or we want to get to know more the Lord. One thing is, should be a byproduct, a byproduct, oh my goodness, yes, product of our life with the Lord is to show compassion. If I see somebody and going through some difficult time and did they have any kind of empathy, any kind of compassion, any moment of putting myself on, uh, on, on their shoes, I'm missing a very important aspect of the life of Jesus in my life. Because when I know how God is compassionate, how God is have a sympathy with me, I will start to have a sympathy with other people. Uh, this week was, uh, uh, I have uh, high moments and really low moments in uh, this, this past week. High moments, I, I had two great uh, alpha group 
at uh, the prison. And the people who was participating was great. Talking, and we have a great time. I, that was a high moment. That was Wednesday for me. But Thursday in the morning was tough. Uh, I was preparing and reading these texts, especially this one here. Um, and uh, every one of us was created by God's image. We are in some way, somehow, if you do not like you, well, that's another, um, another chapter of conversation. But God created you in a very special way. You are unique. And in some way, God, you are an expression of God. And uh, when we treat people fairly and with dignity and with love and compassion, it, it's, it's, we actually recognize and take in consideration of uh, um, um, God's masterpiece. That's what we are. But I need to visit people in custody. And I was with this text in my mind. And my heart was broken. Because I saw people behind bars in cells with his life completely broken. And I looked at it and I said, that was not God's intent. That was not the God's plan for this person. And my heart was really broken. And uh, so I'd like to end here. We are in, in our series um, about go and be church. Go and be church. We are not talking about here check boxes. We're talking about a life, a life with God, knowing God, and be transformed by God, and live for Him. So go and be church, and I put a B, the definition of compassion. What a challenge, guys. What a challenge we have. Because we have an amazing example, the person of Jesus, who... who it's so compassionate. But be the definition of compassion. Show Jesus' love and kindness towards everyone you meet. What a challenge. But we have an amazing example. Our compassionate Jesus. Who... What I need to do and you need to do is pray and ask, Lord, transform my heart and help me see people. And give me the words, your words, to bring some kind of comfort, encouragement. Because we can see that. In Jesus, a prayer. And um, so, go and be the church. Thank you for sh sharing, Lisa, your testimony. And yes, you are right. Whatever we are, it's just go and be. Be what the Lord is talking to us, moving us. And you know what I'm learning? One very interesting thing. I don't know if it happened with you before. Sometimes you, have a, you are talking with one person. And suddenly comes, comes, comes some thoughts like pray for her, pray for him, say this, do that. Sometimes that happens. That is the Holy Spirit. Like you talk, um, Karen, 
give us some hint to you what you should do. And I, I'd like to encourage, obey the prompts of the Holy Spirit in your life. Obey, and you will see how blessed experience you are going to be. So, we should be a people of a compassion. We should be, because we have a Lord. The Lord of our lives is compassionate. So, thank you for, let's say, thank you for your patience and compassion with my English. And you, 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 has been, you have been so good. Thank you so much. But what about outside? What about when you are driving? You have a, a little compassion about the person ahead of you. You don't know what's going on. So let's show kindness to one another. Because Jesus do that. And let's go and be church and show his compassion to a, a, wor a world who needs more and more. And the Lord wa wants to use myself and you, whatever you go. So let's be a people of compassion for the glory of Jesus. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we are, we need your intervention. We, we, you, we need your, to feel how you feel, to see what you see, to say what you say to the people around us through the connections you help, um, make happen in our lives. So, Father, you know what we need to be more compassion like you, Jesus? You know us. And I just ask you, Father, to transform our church, to transform my life in, in, in a people who will take care of the people around us. Thank you so much for being so compassionate to me. Thank you for knowing me, knowing us. We want to adore you. In your name, Jesus. Amen.